This episode is brought to you by Lightstream, the nation's premier online consumer lender. Lightstream offers low-interest fixed-rate loans from $5,000 to $100,000 for practically any purpose. We thank them for making our show a possibility. Yes, we really do. I am a lesbian. Black queer human being. We are two gay dads. I am a transgender man. Trans woman. Bisexual, non-binary, single parent by choice. Can I ever have nice things? I just want nice (laughs) things. He just got spit up on. (laughs) Hey, Jay. (laughs) Very nice. Very nice. Okay, you just got very Jersey on me. You know what? I'm from Jersey. It's because of Beulah. You're talking like Beulah. I've been t- You've been talking like uh, Beulah. Beulah talks like this, you know? Wait, oh, they, they don't, don't know, know who Beulah is. Let me tell you. Helen, our fake Ooh. assistant that doesn't exist, introduced us to another fake assistant that doesn't exist, Beulah. Beulah is now in our lives. Yes. Beulah is in our lives, and <laughs> Beulah is a Jersey native born in Camden and is no nonsense, drives a slingshot, has a well formed uh, low afro with gray, <laughs> and Beulah wears marrow and afro. capri pants. Yes she, yes, she does. Yes, she does. And she always got a backpack. <laughs> Beulah's looking at me now, like, keep talking to me. Keep like talking, that. keep talking to me. Well, so Helen introduced us to Beulah because they play poker together on Thursday nights. And yeah, who knows? Poker in the front. I don't, well, that's Wait, the thing. Is that the joke? Poker in the front, liquor in the back. Oh my God, That's e. the joke. <laughs> that's it's liquor, from, like the drink. That's straight from Beulah's mouth. Because here's the that thing. Was. We're not sure if they're a love item, Helen and Beulah. They but every once them. in a while, Helen doesn't show up for the job and Beulah does. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but now we have Beulah. I don't know what's going so on. So today, Beulah's going to yeah. be rolling the tape. But anyway, that's that's our news today. <laughs> in the name of equity, we have a new assistant. Yes, Black Beulah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it, you can't. Anyway. I took her this weekend mm-hmm. to see The Woman King. Oh, and Beulah yeah. had to sit in the back row. And I was like, why are you sitting in the back row? She said, because if this film makes me angry, I don't want to be near the white people. <laughs> and so she sat all the way in the back row. And I was like, Beulah. But then I was watching a movie and I was like, okay, Beulah probably, I understand. <laughs> this movie it's good. has I haven't changed seen my whole life. Really? First of all, I've never, I go to movies and I instantly become a character. And it's usually the white male lead main character. I know, character. it's a very interesting fact about you, I know. It is fascinating, but this is the first time. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I left, I'm not really gonna cry, but it's still deeply emotional. I left the movie wanting to not only be the character, but also in awe of the actor in the same way I had been in awe of like Clooney and Pitt and all those others, I left wanting to be the warrior king, mm. the woman, not, not the woman king, the warrior king, that's me. But it was so good, so much great acting mm. and black women winning mm. is something I don't see on TV. Oh yeah, You don't see black women winning, mm. Mm. conquering and winning. And it's a story that I then I went and did a deep dive about and it's an actual tribe of warrior women in West Africa, like, wow. oh, Y'all go see, go see it. this. I gotta you know go see it. It's serious. When I start clapping, you gotta go see the movie. Um, are there any queers in it? Any any chance? Oh, but it. I mean, they. I don't want to give away the movie, but how can you make right. a I mean, movie we're everywhere. without any? We're queers? everywhere. You can't make a movie, mm. especially a movie with black warriors Ugh. that are you know. Oh, oh. yeah, and I follow okay. a bunch of them right. online. Ciao. I want to That's train like so a warrior. I want to get a spear. We're not getting a spear, wanna... though. We're not giving Wait. E a spear. Beulah, put the spear down. I... <laughs> we got to move on. We got to move on. We got to okay. move on. All right, before we, we get on. into our guests, we have to talk to you, yes. of course, about Patreon. If you want us to keep sharing these super important LGBTQ plus family stories, you can help. We've got various tiers on our Patreon community. They only start at just two bucks a month, and then they go up from there. Yes. Um, you're going to do... 
a good thing and you get bonus content. Like what? Like what, E? Like videos of most episodes dropped a day early, crazy behind the scenes shenanigans of Jay and I trying to get our lives together <laughs> and anything else we can think of that is current and provocative <laughs> and provocative. engaging to keep you entertained. So head on over <laughs> to like... patreon.com <laughs> forward slash ovaries talk to join. Let's get into our guests. Desi and Katie. I'm going to let you take it from here a little bit, E, because you go way back with these two, do you not? I do. I was at Desi and Katie's wedding mm. back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And they've been together, though, a long time. Y'all will find this out on the episode. I don't want to give it all away. But Desi and I met as teaching artists at a company in the city. And here's how Desi got me. We went to a bar after a day of hard work and teaching the kids of America how hard to be work, artists. Hard work. And it was a karaoke bar. Yes. And Desi got up and she sang Bette Midler's Did You Ever Know That You're My, my hero. hero? And blew me away. Like I was in tears. <laughs> Desi's singing voice, her acting, she is the bomb. Mm. And then years later, I meet Katie. She met Katie first. And, and I meet Katie and I'm like, oh my God, they're these two beautiful and funny as fuck, they're so, man. They uh, are this is, hilarious. This was my takeaway from this. I mean, many things, but like we laughed so much talking to them. It was such a fun conversation and y'all are going to have fun hearing this conversation. Beulah, Beulah darling, it's your chance. <laughs> Hi, Desi and Katie. Hi. Hey. Hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. I mean, I think, well, I'm the only new person in the room here because y'all are friends with E. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Way back. Good to meet you. Yes, good to meet you too. And for those of you at home, you have no idea all of the um, technical difficulties we just went through, as is usually the case. <laughs> <laughs> but we soldiered on and we got through it. And now we have... This lovely family, Desi, Katie, and Baby is not here, but I guess we wouldn't be interviewing you if Baby was here. We would not <laughs> be able to. Well, let's let everybody know uh, who you are, so we need to get right into that elevator pitch. All right. Yeah, 30 seconds. We will never cut you off because we're not mean. Right. I get the <laughs> timer, but we never stick to it. Okay. All right. Ready? Hey, we are Desi. And Katie. And we are a lesbian couple living out in Queens. Uh, we have a four-year-old baby girl. Um, we went through the process where the doctor gives you the baby. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> IBM. <laughs> IB, no. BBD. Something oh. like that. I don't oh. know. CBD. Oh, yeah. um, and <laughs> then we <laughs> we've been together for 20 1,000 years. 21 years. Um, Woo! Uh, we got married in 2013, uh, and the marriage proposal was based on whether or not New York City or New Jersey got uh, marriage equality first, and that was how the decision was made. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. You did it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you did it. Amazing. So wait a second. Wait a second. I'm going to dig into something. Yeah, dig in. You had a whole, you had a whole very long child-free life together. Yes. Yes. And then you were like, let's get married, which as you do, we, I got married um, 2012. I got married right around oh, the same yeah. time. And then we had our daughter in 2013. So, wow. That yeah, it is, changes. We're gonna have to, yeah, changes. It sure does change things, yeah. right? I oh, think yeah. we're going to have to dig in a little bit at some point to how the two of you keep making it work after being together so long and then adding the hiccup of a four-year-old. <laughs> well, mostly we <laughs> find ourselves superior to other couples. Um, so we relish in that. Um, and we, we read and work and just work. And we, like this year, we had to force ourselves to go out on a date and I mean, get a it's babysitter. Impossible. It's so hard. You have to force yourself. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's like a trick to, yeah. to America. You have to force yourself to have that time. And yes. it's so easy when you have the kid around all the time to just be like, nah, nah, not happening. Not happening. Yeah. Agreed. And COVID was another little hiccup. Oh my COVID God. was the other hit. Yeah. We'll get into that, but let's rewind and let's like take it to 2001. Yeah. Let's go back. The very beginning. Yes. You don't know each other yet. Are you both living nope. your best gay lives? Well, more or less, except I did not know when people were flirting with me. I had my <laughs> own version of my own best gay life, um, but I would not say I was uh, slick or cool or. <laughs> you know, functional in the world. 
in that way. Who, who really is? I was not. E might have been. E might have e had was. some games. I e sold games. all the <laughs> gay oats for everybody. I, I mean, because you were married in 13. You were married in 12. I was first married in 11. So you guys were out there living your best gay lives. And you met yeah. where, how, what? In the street. On the street. For any Ooh. children watching this, we met in the street. What does that even Clyde. mean? Oh. Old school. Well, it, it literally means Desi was sitting on the... Pier. Pier. Mm-hmm. This is starting to sound like a really weird yeah. story. This is like um, a lesbian rom-com. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> waiting for the fireworks at Pride. And I was pacing up and down in front of her because I had dropped a little $1 pin I had acquired that day. And I don't like to lose things. So I was like, damn it, I'm going to find this pin. So I'm yeah. pacing up and down, staring Angrily. at the ground. Yeah. Angrily. Mm-hmm. And my friends had gone... <laughs> a way to hook up with each other. So I was alone and bitter about that as well. So I was just this angry, bitter little person <laughs> pacing up and down the pier. And Desi picked me up off the street. I, well, what I said was, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Was that a pickup line? She had walked by twice. And I was like, huh, huh. And then the third <laughs> time I have to say something, but it wasn't prepped. So I went okay. with, do you have the time? And the better part was, my two friends are sitting next to me on their phones playing like, I think it was like Caterpillar or Snake because it was the flip with phones. With the time on them. Yeah, with the time on them. And she was like, huh? And then I joined them, but um, she was asking me, you know, like, what's your name? Like, what are you doing here? Whatever. And I would just answer each question. And then she said, um, I'm flirting with you. Now you ask me for my name. And she sort of oh me God. through the entire wow, process. Katie. You said you didn't have game, but I'm starting to see a clearer picture here. No, like, I, understand I really don't have game. Because you were really focused on the thing you had lost. And so yes. there was no other mental space for the flirting. No. <laughs> oh, we also didn't exchange phone numbers until you started going down the steps. At the subway. For the train, yeah. So you spent the whole, like, like, fireworks together? Yeah. Aww. I was only in New York for the summer. So I did... St- Day with her for a fair amount of the summer right then. So there was a little U-hauling there. Um, there but then I couldn't move up to New York for another year. And then at that point, we still didn't live together. Yeah, we didn't live together for a for while. Maybe five years. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. Okay. And then you decided to get married. And were kids, were kids on the table the whole time? Or what was the conversation around having a child? Desi always wanted to have I kids. always wanted, I definitely always wanted to have kids. I have four siblings, I have uh, 13 nieces and nephews, so there was always going to be kids somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty pumped about it. Yeah, Yeah. so you had the conversation pretty early on, I want to do it, I want to have kids. And being being gay didn't deter either of you from that, or make you think that it's not the cards for us. Oh no, I was like, we could find one in the streets, we (laughs) could uh, have one delivered, you know, Desi whatever happens, more, more of the like Amazon Prime version of acquiring a child. But it's a realistic. Kind of, oh, it's a are realistic you lost, version. Buddy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I thought yeah. for years somebody would just leave a baby somewhere. Are you yeah, I find, or like I yes. find it, like Law and Order. Like I'd find a baby and like, no, officer, I'll keep him. That's yeah, what so I like, yeah. imagined. <laughs> so that was your initial thought, and then and then as the baby convo. <laughs> continued on where did you land how did you land on what how you wanted to go about it and you know what was your family plan how'd you get educated on this on the staff well we went to the center the gay center Mm -hmm. for like support group meetings it was odd at times it was a little odd i was because i finally got to point it's like i just want to have the baby i just want to make a mistake while having sex and then we have the baby yeah that's if only if only that's all i want that's all I Why want. Why can't we just have that? Yeah. Yeah. And then after meeting these strangers for like a month, two, three months, we realized like a lot of her friends at work are gay and they have kids. So we were mm. like, all right, what did you do? How did you right. acquire your baby? Yeah. And then I think we literally just did what they did. We call that LGBTQ drafting. You just follow the path Ooh. Of, the, yes. of the couples yes. that did it before you. How funny. So you tried the center and you were like, this is overwhelming and I don't know what to do here and then you just you went to your friends and were like duh let's just follow what they did yeah yeah so so what, what was did the they path? do what did yeah, yeah what was the path first let me ask did you plan we'll marry 
And then we'll have a couple of years. Then we'll have the baby. Like, it sounds so well yeah, orchestrated. No, we didn't. We did. I did. Apparently, maybe, we didn't. Apparently, we did she, not. She did. Mm. I thought we did. In your head. Yeah. Um, in the- <laughs> yeah, in my head, I guess. I think by the time we got married, we had been together so long that it, being married wasn't that different. It was just like an extension mm-hmm. of our pre-child years. And we got a rice cooker. That was the best part. <laughs> that was key. Yeah. But like... I think that we waited because we're we, procrastinating. We procrastinate. Yeah, we overthink. Plus the building we were living in. I'll just say that parts of the staircase were held together with duct tape. And we had a squirrel living in our ceiling. Okay. Um, also, great. all the floors slanted down to the middle. So I think that would have been hard for her to learn to walk. <laughs> I had one of those apartments. <laughs> I had one of those. <laughs> yeah. So we weren't ready. What made you decide, all right, now's the time. And this is the route we're going to go. Well, I mean, we're getting old. <laughs> we had to get a move on. I think there's some, you know. There was definitely some, the biological clocks are ticking. Mm-hmm. And I think it was just time. Like, How old were you both? I was. Whatever old she is, and I'll add on my numbers because <laughs> I can't remember. I was almost 30. Yeah. I was 37 when I had her. Okay. So it was like 45. You were like forty five ish. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. It, it was is about it was about that time. So did you have yeah, it yes. already planned out that Katie was gonna be the carrier or was there a point where how did you come to that decision? I tried at first. Oh really? But we were just like, um, I'm old, I'm not healthy, it's not a good look. Um But how did you try? What, did you go to a fertility well, doctor? I or? went to I went to a doctor, which was a terrible I did not like that experience. No, why? I don't remember that part. Yeah, yeah, what happened? Oh, no, I went to an OBGYN and she was, I was just like, I'm going to have a baby. And uh-huh. then she was like, huh? She's like, yeah, maybe not you. You should ask your wife. And I was like, well, thank you for your care and love okay. in this moment. That was so wow, sweet. Wow, they're horrible, aren't they? Can I get sorry. like a lollipop or a sticker? I didn't even get a sticker. No. And then we were trying to do a known donor. Like a friend? Yeah. How'd that go? It was no good boy, not, no. not well. Because also, like... Like, I'll be honest, we would get the sperm and she was like, I can't touch the sperm. That's gross. It's sperm. And I'm like, dude, we have to touch. And then she was like, ew. And I was like, okay, we can't have a baby while we're going, ew, sperm. So it was just. But why were you touching it, though? That's my question. Well, she didn't want any of it to get near her. Right. And it has to go inside. She's literally like, her arm is three feet in front of her. I'm like, dude, this is not. Like, if she had a drone, it would have worked Maybe, if we had a drone. Yeah, y'all handling the sperm yeah. <laughs> was not the best scenario. But so, so, but, yeah. uh, but I'm trying to get like an overview of, of the method you went, the methods you went down to make your baby. So at first you were like, we're going to do the try at home method and we're going to use a known donor. And what we're was the conversation that with that known donor like? Who, who was this person? Well, and like all the, we want all the details. He was a really good friend of ours. I mean, he still is a really good friend of ours. And I don't remember the conversation exactly, but I think he was kind of on board. Like, no, I mean, they, obviously in the end, but he was pretty. He was definitely on board. And we talked beginning. and like the big conversation was how much parenting and interaction and knowledge of the child. And he was actually fine with just donating sperm, knowing that he was the donor. But we are parenting and doing all of that. You know. And so he was like, "I yeah, I'll give you the sperm, and I don't. I, I'm fine not really having yeah. anything to do." The timing was not great because I think technically, if you had actually gotten pregnant on that time, we would have would have been pregnant before he signed anything. But I think the trust was there that yeah. like it wouldn't have been an issue, right? Yeah. Okay that that makes sense. So you so you go down that route. Katie doesn't want to put sperm in, but you tried it anyway. Nope. You, yeah. you you sucked it up for the team, Katie. Yeah. That sound that was the wrong. That was the that worst. Was that was the wrong. <laughs> See, I wasn't going to say anything. That was, was no so sucking. bad. There was no sucking. <laughs> you took one for the team. No, took one for the team is not even good. Okay. So Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. No. So we we It happened. It, it happened. happened. We tried it, a known donor <laughs> and you now tried we're it moving once? on. Yes. One time? Twice? Maybe twice. Maybe once twice. or twice. Okay. I I also just felt like I was like, oh wait, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't I don't know where this all goes. Like, we will I mean, be honest, we still are not quite sure where the cervix is. And even once she got pregnant, <laughs> they would be like, here's the cervix, and we'd be like, mm. Yeah, good. <laughs> way sorry. to go. And we're like 
Okay, so did you buy like a kit for the insertion? What did or did you use? use like an actual turkey baster? I mean, did we do a turkey? Did we might do have. an actual turkey baster? Did we? I think we might have used an actual turkey baster. <laughs> and then finally, we decided to like get our acting gear and we were like, okay, no more turkey baster. We're going to go see like a medical doctor who will tell us where the cervix is, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually, our fr- this is horrible. This is not the memory I'd like to have. But my f- our first appointment um, with the fertility doctor was the day of the 2016 election, oh, which yeah. I remember because I was working in the Bronx that day. And I was like, oh, I'll, no big deal. I'll leave work a little early. I'll take a cab down to meet Desi at the appointment. And we're like driving across Midtown and it's so jammed. I was super late to the appointment because everybody is like celebrating slash protesting in the streets. I mean, the election hadn't even been done yet. And Trump Tower was all blocked off because I was going to Midtown Manhattan. It was before the election had been Right before the day of. The day of, so the day like, of right. voting. Everybody's gotcha, still gotcha. voting. And I was still like mentally like, oh, we're going to do this appointment. Then we're going to go like have some champagne mm-hmm. or whatever. And celebrate the first female president. Right. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that didn't work. Um, so that. Um, Threw a little wrench in there. Yeah. I mean, it's just not the memory that I want when I think about our first appointment. But the doctor was very nice this time. Yeah. It was good. It was a different, different place, different, different doctor. Place. But, um, yeah. and, and you went in and you were like, Katie's going to carry. Yeah. We're going to try it this yeah. way. Oh, uh, what, what about sperm? Had you gone down this uh, route the yet? Place is, I believe the place is now closed. But it was like an on, uh, online sperm bank or? New York sperm bank. Manhattan, Manhattan Cryo Bank. Manhattan Cryo. Which I think is now closed and I think under somewhat shady circumstances, Oh, that's good. Unfortunately. That's so nice our, to hear. Our baby's good. Yeah. <laughs> our baby's great. So far. The sperm was wonderful. Yeah. So, you know. Thanks, 24601. <laughs> 24601. <laughs> that's not the uh, those of you who don't know musical theater that's not the sperm donor number but did had you gotten the sperm ahead of time or you went to the doctor okay no. so take us no we went it. to the doctor first to we went to the doctor and we we're like okay we want to have a baby what do we do like we yeah. were just like we just took on the role of not knowing anything mm-hmm. we we're like just tell us all the steps just tell us all and the steps she step. did she's yeah. like okay you do this you do this you have to buy sperm Unless, you you know, you want to know donor. And she named a couple big sperm places. So then we, like, did the whole weird, like, Tinder for mm-hmm, sperm mm-hmm. thing. Swipe left for a good time. Um, yeah. But then we found, um, we looked through, and we were looking for African-American sperm, which luckily for us is, and unluckily, is a smaller number. That's one of the of, issues, yeah. Of donors mm-hmm. to choose from. Mm-hmm. But it was probably, I mean, for us, again, it was probably yeah. for the best because, again, procrastinating, indecisive, if we had had to look through thousands of possibilities, we would have never picked. But we, between the African American sperm and then the fact that like there's this CMV oh, test, yeah. I guess mm-hmm. they do, mm-hmm. and I guess most people have CMV, so you can use any. But I don't, so oh. they were like, "Well, you have to pick a CMV negative donor." Yeah. So that left us with like four options. There you go. Which was actually great for us. Yeah. <laughs> and it was also good that we chose the smaller sperm bank. Because I got lost. I think California Cryobank, they have like, this person looks like this celebrity. Mm, Yeah. And then that was it for me. I was like, oh, look, this looks like my friend. And we were like hours of, yeah. So the less choice choice was better for y'all. Yes, definitely. There you go. That's good. And then they have the baby pictures. Uh And it would just happen to be like the person we found. I was like, oh, that looks like half of my family. Oh, perfect. Like it, it looks like similar to us. Was that important for you guys to use a black donor? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we've had some friends who were like, we just want to have a baby. And then they got the donor and then the baby was born and they were like, huh, <laughs> I didn't realize the kid was going to look like that. Well, because you want the baby, you wanted the baby to reflect the two of you. Mm-hmm. To reflect the two of us. And then, you know, they're already going to have struggles. Right. Because of the So at moms. least know that they be- where they belong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting about that because I wanted to have a white donor, not because of looks or hair or anything superficial, but because between the African-American sickle cell trait and the, uh, what is it, Lorenzo's oil that is carried in my family. When I was trying, I wanted a white donor because it knocks all of those out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But then but my, your ex I, I, was black. Black. And we we're both right. black. And she's like, look, we're already going to have a lesbian baby. 
do we need to add on now this piece of it too? Mm -hmm. So I, Mm -hmm. I, you know, I let that go, but yeah, it's a big choice. It is. The genetic thing though. I mean, for some reason, when we told my parents that we were pregnant, my dad got very excited about the genetic things. So he's like, so that's really interesting. So that means that like, the baby won't be at risk for like any of these genetic diseases because you could, and I, and he was just very pumped about that. Oh, because of the the bank like weeding out all yeah, of these. Yeah, and we could make sure then that like you were saying about you know if you potentially carry this, you could like make sure that the sperm yeah. didn't carry that same yeah. thing or whatever. The genetic yeah. testing that they do on these yeah. specimens yeah. is helpful. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, but in the long term, I think it's much better for what we decided because. If we had had a white baby, I don't think it would have been as helpful yeah. coming from two black households that, you know, yes. that probably would have been I mean, you would have spent a, a lot of time at security checks. Yo, <laughs> yes. uh, for real. Be. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. You know, Jay, I'm learning mm-hmm. more and more with each guest we interview how hard we work to make these babies. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always work out the way we think it will. I mean, actually, practically never does. Truth, truth. And it's rarely free. Mm-hmm. Not only do we queer folks have to pay for the normal expenses we do when, when we become adults, like weddings, cars, buying mm-hmm. homes, but we also have to shell out some serious dough just to make our freaking families, right? Absolutely. And we want to help. Yes. If you're ready for that next baby-making chapter in your life, we have a way to help you get rid of any high-interest credit card debt you might have so you can start this journey with a clean slate. Yes. Now may be the time to consolidate that debt and pay it off faster with a low fixed-rate loan from Lightstream. A credit card consolidation from Lightstream can help you pay off your credit cards and lock in a low fixed interest rate. Rates start at 5.73% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. Yeah, because, you know, Lightstream believes that people with good credit deserve a better loan experience. And that is exactly what they deliver. Plus, the rate is fixed, so it will never go up over the entire life of the loan, which is nice. Mm. And just for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount and save even more. Yes, the only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash OCT. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash OCT. Disclaimer, subject to credit approval, rates range from 5.73 APR to 19.99% APR and include a 0.5 auto pay discount. Lowest rate requires excellent credit, terms and conditions apply, and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash OCT for more information. So you got your sperm donor, and then, yep. and you did IUI, or you did IVF? Yes, IUI. That's the one. That's the one, where you just put the stuff yeah. where it needs to be, and then it does yeah. its little swimmy magic, yes. and then yes. the miracle happens. <laughs> yes. yes. We're so... Scientific and technical <laughs> on this oh, yeah. show. I just want you all to yes. know. Um, how many times did it take? It was the fifth time okay. that it worked. All right. And of course, you get to that like mm-hmm. point where insurance won't cover any IVF unless you've tried six naturally, naturally for six months. Yeah. I remember being at a payphone in the middle of the city in the rain, yelling at some <laughs> lady at the insurance company like, I've had sex for my whole <laughs> life and I've never gotten pregnant. Um, I'm pretty sure I like, have done the same exact thing. <laughs> you don't understand. I've been doing it. I've been trying. <laughs> I've had so much unprotected sex. Never gotten pregnant. I never. And, um, oh my God. And it should be covered. And she was like, yeah, no. Um, it's inherently discriminatory and they don't even think is. about it. And it's not even on their radar. Like that's the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we had to pay for the six, you know, IUI. And I have pretty good insurance. So it was not like yeah. it, insurance covered like lots of the little pieces of it, like all the tests and all the like blood work and related things. But um, I think the doctor would have liked us to go to IVF because she was she I think she didn't say this, but I think she felt like, you know, it wasn't going to work. But we were like, we're going to do the six because we want insurance to kick in here. Um and the fifth time it worked. So in the end, yeah. I was like, see, it worked out. You followed out. your gut and it worked out. And I didn't have to take a bajillion drugs. So that was good. Yeah. 
When do you test? Like, I want to know that oh, moment with the test. Let's talk about this two week wait. Let's talk yeah, about oh, this, oh, the yeah. managing wait. the two week wait. Let's talk about how did you manage the two week wait? I was such a hot mess. Poorly. <laughs> Poorly. Poorly. <laughs> because, like, at this point, it wasn't, I was, I felt stupid because I was not even like, we were not one of those couples that it was like, you know, it was our fifth try. So that's not excessive in the grand scheme of right. things. But I had become like fully and completely obsessed. Everything was like, reading symptoms of mm-hmm. this that and the Googling. you know there was the cutting of the pineapple yes same okay <laughs> what i think that that worked because the one time we, we i ate the pineapple court is the time we got I'm pregnant what you. these things Wait, i've never so heard of this before in my life I never- <laughs> how do you not so what is the pineapple you get a pineapple yeah. you go buy a whole pineapple i think it's the day you get inseminated or the day i forgot the timing you have to look it up but like you're supposed to chop the core of the pineapple into like five slices and then every day you eat a piece of pineapple core. You can eat the fruit too, but like the important thing is the core. But I come home and she just has this pineapple. I'm like, what is happening? And she's like, it's for the baby. Be quiet. I'm like, wow. the baby. I, I would like to say, just as a disclaimer to all our listeners out there, nothing we are talking about is scientifically backed here. <laughs> nothing. However, <laughs> however, if cutting up, a, and who knows, it might work. And if cutting up a pineapple core and eating it for five days, six days, it's going to help you. And by all fucking means, you cut that dang pineapple yes. and you eat it. I mean, it's shit. not like it's poison. No, right. it's, it's pineapple. It tasted good. It was good. I mean, it's delicious. I ate the pineapple and like we're going on. And of course, you have not real symptoms because you're not even really pregnant yet. But like every twinge, I'm like, aha, uh-huh. that's probably the baby's foot or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but then the baby's she, two yes, days old and it's yeah. this big, yeah. Yeah. big feet mm-hmm. walking around. But like, <laughs> At the time that I knew, it was like a Wednesday was technically the first day that because the fertility places they tell you like don't take ability pregnancy. They don't. They tell you don't don't. test until X day, whatever it would be, the exact two weeks. And um, that was a Wednesday, and so that Monday I was out of town for work. I had like flown to Georgia with some colleagues for a conference, and I was that Sunday night. I was like feeling a little sick, and I didn't even want to like pretend in my you know in my Mm -hmm. mind I'm like. I'm not going to think it's a symptom, but I kind of do, but maybe I'm not. And then I was like, oh, shoot, I'm just getting sick. Then I came back Monday and then Tuesday I was cooking a baked potato for dinner. I cut it open. I was like, this smells and this like smells nasty. I think this potato is gone rotten. Yeah, I had to smell all of the potatoes. (laughs) And then later I was like, do potatoes go rotten in a way that you can't see? Like, I feel like a potato has to be pretty far gone before it's going to smell rotten. It's like sprouts thing. So. Mm-hmm. And even yes. then it won't stink because you can cut the sprouts off. That's science. Exactly. Yeah. It has to be like really. Yeah. So okay. in retrospect, I was like, oh, I think that was the like pregnancy smell thing. Right. But at the time I didn't. I was just like this stupid potato. <laughs> and then I touched it the next morning. The, the two week wait is like really hard. And I have to say, like, we have had listeners who've recently reached out and said, please talk more about the two week wait, because it is something that our families experience a lot because many of us are yes. going through this freaking fertility journey and told don't do anything yeah. i'll tell you what it took me th- almost three years to get pregnant with my son over 20 iuis and three ivfs i tested every single time during the two week wait or the six week the five day wait for ivf or whatever it was i tested maniacally every single <laughs> i bought so many goddamn pregnancy tests we spent so much i spent so much money i would like hide them from my wife because i didn't want her to know <laughs> And and the one time that worked is the one time I did not test during the two week wait. I did the same. My two week wait when because I only got in I got inseminated, I think, two or three times. I think. I can't even remember so long ago. But I went to Panera Bread and took probably between Panera Bread and Walgreens, I took twenty four to twenty six tests because I didn't want my wife at the time to know that I was insane and I was sure I was pregnant. Oh. And I just needed to prove it on a stick, but the stick keep, kept saying no. And I was like, but how? I feel it. Yeah, it's it, crazy, it's, it's this process. It's a mind trip. It's really hard. So. Yeah. It is. I think I was just superstitious a little bit. And I was like, if I test before they tell me to test, it'll like backfire or something. So I wouldn't test. Yeah. Like, I totally get that impulse. Like, I yeah. wanted to, but then I was like, no, if I do it before the official day... It, it'll, I don't make the baby go away or something. Were you together when you peed on the stick? Like, what was that? No, no I was, a, I was asleep. <laughs> nice. Because you were doing like one of your 6 a.m. I had to leave early. So I was like, I'm going to pee on the stick before I go to yeah. work. Okay. Um, 
But then I came and woke her up. Oh. And but I answered this time, which is amazing. Usually she just ignores me and rolls over. Yeah, like, oh, yeah that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's long-term marriage. We got to get into that. Yeah. We got to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. She was very happy. We kissed. We hugged. And then yeah. she went back to sleep and I went to work. Yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what Good happened. Good job. Yeah. Good job for that. And then uh, pregnancy was good. I mean, yes, it was. Like, it was a very healthy pregnancy. It was very, like, all of that good stuff. We'll just say that we had to choose the um, OB who specializes in nervous people. Oh. On who, sa- who was but the they nervous were, one? Kate? They me. were. Well, both of us. But both of I us. was pretty bad. Oh. She was pretty bad, but they were great. Like, we would come in, they were like, hey, <laughs> okay. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. I'd be like, I have 75 problems. Sit down. Well, even actually, I remember when we were finished with the with the fertility doctor, she was like, oh, look, I think I see something there. And we were both like, yep. I didn't see. I still don't know what we saw. She printed out a picture. I still don't see the thing that I was. I was like, oh, I see it. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, when we were at like 39 weeks, they'd be like, that's the leg. I'm like, I thought that was the heart. And I was like, I thought that was the spleen. That, you're like, okay. that's the baby. That's that's it. Yeah, that's it. OK. I mean, the experiences wow. run the gamut. Yeah. I feel like I got one day of every pregnancy symptom. Like oh. I grew up once. <laughs> I had a migraine once. Like, oh, okay. I got... Oh, when did you... What was it when you told me to check to make sure your brain wasn't imploding? What was that? <laughs> that turned out to be a migraine. How do you check Yeah, that, that was the migraine. How do you check? How do you check? I wanted thing. her to Google it. Oh, okay. And actually, it's great. If you Google, my brain is exploding, Uh-oh. Google's like, sometimes this happens, but maybe you should see a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Google's just like... I'm not playing no, with you. I don't Go have time to for that doctor. right now. Google has yeah, way, more inter- way more amazing things to be doing. My OBs were great. Again, lesbian drafting. We Mm -hmm. went to the same Mm -hmm. OB that two prior lesbian couples at my job had gone to. So we just followed in their footsteps there. There it is. And they were great on on every front. And they really didn't give me crap about weight or age or anything. They mostly have older patients. Like they tend to have older, more older, like more people in their 30s and 40s anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, they were great. And that was definitely important to me but like they were they were really good that's awesome awesome. i had a doctor tell me that part of the reason why the first two didn't work is probably i needed to lose some weight Mm. and that was devastating because i'm like but i know lots of people like three times as big as i am Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. having squirting out happy little babies Mm -hmm. and like we were we're really we are really killing it with the language Today. As I get older and we're talking about this process in my life now, the doctors are all like, weight is weight. You can be super healthy at any size or not, right? But age, once that uterus starts turning into a chalky matter, oh that's my when it gets... It does. It literally turns okay. into a chalky matter. Oh, my goodness. Okay. okay. Anyway. Okay. That's scientific? That's <laughs> sci- that is scientific. Jamie, next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do want to ask you, Desi, because I know that you tried. You gave it two mm-hmm. tries. So how are your feelings around being the non-bio parent? And like, was it a thing for you? Was it not? Let me dig into that. It was a, it was a thing and I was worried about it. Mm-hmm. And again, I went online to like uh, Facebook groups mm-hmm. that talked about it, uh, who people were like, I'm just kind of nervous about this. But what I found was, again, because we kind of live our lives saying, oh, we're so much better than the other couples. <laughs> um, there were people who were just like, my wife won't let me go to the appointment. Oh, my my wife won't let me do this. And I was like, right. oh, we don't have that. Right. Like I knew the doctor. I would, you know, I had my own crazy going on in my brain. And I think it also helped that I had great dads mm. who like my friend gave me a book it was like um commando dad but he changed all the dads to mom Aww. for me and like oh you they, mean like, great took, dad friends yeah. great dad yeah great friends. dad friends yeah great dad friends took the time to be like well you're gonna have to do this and you're gonna have to do here's that. how to be the support. so it was like mm. yeah right. here's how to be the support you know but i had my own worries i, I it's so funny my i think my computer search in the last two weeks was like first 100 days. I was so, I could not find the first 100 days after the baby was born. Yeah. And I was like, so what do we do? Right. It's, what's your, <laughs> and how, what? how did it all work out? Uh, after we got the car seat in and I cried in the heat 
putting in the car Everybody seat. Everybody does. That, that is always the that sweatiest. That might have been the hardest thing. The yes. sweatiest moment of your life, getting that car but seat in the first time. But you can go to time. the police department, Even in the, the dead of winter. We went to the fire department for the second baby. We did. And they were oh, like, they do do it. We, why, yeah, they do it. Why are you here? I guess I can't yes, do that for exactly. you. It was really awkward, but he put it in. Yeah. How was birth? We had a giant purple bouncy ball. Yes. That we never used. A suitcase <laughs> filled with Twizzlers and treats. He had plans. And snacks. Yeah. And Katie got in there, got on the table, and didn't get up or move. No. I was like, I'm not getting on that bouncy ball. Really yeah. Talking. She was just like, no, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I couldn't move. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't move. I tried yeah, to stand yeah. up through it in a contraction. I fell right to the floor. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't, I can't, I can't keep my legs working right now. <laughs> Though I think my favorite part of the birth was there were two monitors, so we could see the other person's monitor. It was for the nurse, uh-huh. like and the then, other next door room. Next door, and then we get into a thing where like we're gonna beat that lady. We're gonna have this baby first. <laughs> And I'm like, oh shoot, she's they're speeding up. We gotta we gotta beat we did not beat them. They had the baby first. So. Uh, yeah, we lost. Uh, we lost okay. that one. I think my favorite part of the birth was getting to the hospital when I tried to run <gasps> from the doctor. So we what? um well, so my water broke in the morning at home. Mm-hmm. And our doctors were very like they're they're very all about like if you wanna have a natural birth, they're gonna help, you know. So we went into the office and they checked and everything was fine. So they were like, you don't need to go right away, which some doctors will send you right away to the hospital if your water breaks. Mm -hmm. They were willing to like give it a little time to progress because I wasn't really like fully in labor. So we went for a walk. We got on the bus downtown. The bus helped actually. The bus (laughs) was great for getting labor started like on the potholes. Oh my God. Um, Oh I got acupuncture for the first and I think probably last time. Last time. Because my doctor was like, acupuncture might help. Um, but it turns out that when you're in labor, someone sticking needles into you for the first time is not the most fun. Probably not great. Um, I had an audition while she was getting the acupuncture for labor. Uh-huh. So I was doing a self tape in the hallway while she's in labor. Oh my God. Yeah. But then oh my God. she's like walking and going, Oh, and I'm like, all right, let's go. She's like, no, it's not time. And I'm like, no, dude, it's time. We're like walking around like 23rd Street, like near Madison Park. And, I'm in um, Starbucks. The doctor calls and she looks at me. She goes, don't pick up the phone. And I'm like, oh no, God. dude, you got to. So finally she took the phone. Because the doctor was like, OK, but I, if it's not like it's time to go. You've got to go now. It's time to do this. But I was like, yeah, don't pick up the phone. And then I left the Starbucks. I was like, I just need a minute. And I'm yeah. walking around and Desi's like. But I have to. But she's like, like on a wall, she's like, like oh. But you're in fucking labor, dude. You gotta go. And then go. We, went, we got we got some fried chicken. Oh we my got god, some chicken. Okay, <laughs> as chicken. one does, as one does. Yeah, she was like, I need to eat before we have the yeah. baby because they okay. won't feed me. I'm like, all right, buddy. Okay. And then we went to Dwayne Reed and got the amniotic fluid blanket. Okay. Wait, what? what? What's because that? Because we needed to take a cab. <laughs> take to the oh, hospital. because your water was still coming out of you this so entire time. We, I was wondering like this. A, Wait, I didn't know water like a, keeps coming out. It keeps out. coming it, out. It just kept, yeah, it keeps it doing it. It just keeps coming out. It oh. just keeps coming out. It is the coming. most surprising thing of the whole yeah. thing yeah. that I was like, why am I still so wet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh. But so then we, I felt like it was very civically minded, right? We're not going to get the cab all this stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we bought so nice a big like felt blanket type thing at Dwayne Reed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not so a I could towel. Sit on it. Not a towel. Just a blanket. Towel. No. no, they didn't have towels. They didn't just have towels. Had, we the, yeah, they had a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> when we got to the hospital, it was like, I don't know, 10 at night or so. Yeah. And she was born just before 6 a.m. So the whole thing once oh. we got there was not super long. She missed the birth. What do you mean? I was like, is she out? Is she out? The baby was on her stomach. She's like, is the baby out? We're like, yep, you're done, buddy. That's... Wait, so you Nothing pushed else. the baby out and didn't realize the baby was out? Well, I realized part of her was out. I thought maybe there were like, you know, dangling bits coming still. And I will say that they, um, I'm s- sitting next to her and I'm like, yeah, we're going to do this. And they're like, all right, we're going to start. And then they start wheeling all the equipment in. Mm-hmm. For the pushing, the like final. Oh, and I look around and I realize that I am not in the seats that I had purchased. I thought I would be in the back. <laughs> you're in right up front. Somewhere. You're right up front. Oh, no. They were like, okay. And they're like, you're going to hold her leg. And I'm like, I'm going to do. <laughs> this was not. Oh, So you but saw I it up, up close and personal. Oh, no, I was there. Yeah. I was there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was amazing. How? 
I feel like I know the answer or part of the answer. How do you keep the spark alive? Because you have set you. We're having so much fun just talking with you. You seem to keep it alive. You seem to keep it going. How do you keep the spark alive, even with the kids and the thing and that you've been together for 20 years or, you know? You know what's interesting? It's something that my, my therapist said. She was like, she's never met a couple that love their alone time so much. We did. We used to call it PPT time. Personal private time. And even like before the baby, we'd get on the train and I'd be like, um, I want PPT time. So then we would like read a book or whatever instead of talking the whole time. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to separate, although yeah, we didn't could. have to separate. But... but like, I'm reading my book. I'm not talking to you. Okay, so I not heard, in a mean way. I heard but... therapist. I also heard private time. Yep. Also, you laugh a lot. Yes. Yeah, we do laugh a lot. I think our funny, like the thing that I kind of miss, but we still have a little bit of it, is like before the baby, we would go on these absurd road trips and like get lost every single time, and we would just like <sighs> joke and laugh and have fun the entire time we were lost driving around like upstate New York or whatever. Yeah. And so I miss that because obviously getting lost with a four-year-old complaining no, is no, terrible. It's not but fun. like, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, but the the laughing parts of it we can still do without the getting lost in the woods part of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. You two are just so amazing and fun, and it's <laughs> this has been really lovely. It's not surprising that you're still together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, twenty-one years. You don't seem like you've been together twenty-one Mm-mm. years, but then you seem so happy. I guess. Maybe that's my own (laughs) jaded shit, right? (laughs) No, this has been really awesome. Really great. I'm so glad you guys were here. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you. you. Oh my gosh. I love them. That was fun. I know. Aren't they amazing? Yeah, they are. And even Beulah's laughing over there in the corner. We don't keep Beulah mm-hmm. in the corner. She just wanted to sit in the corner just to just Don't to nobody clarify. put Beulah in the corner. No, nobody put Beulah in the corner. <laughs> um, if, if you love this show, folks, and you want to represent your love for us and our beautiful families, you need to head over to our shop and get some If These Ovaries Could Talk, the Queer Families Podcast merchandise. We have all kinds of merch. And the holidays are coming up, so you can get it for every person in your family. Why not? Absolutely. Why not? You could even have your kids dress up as one of us. <laughs> for um, Halloween, because that's coming first, right? Can somebody please do that? Can somebody? Can oh my! Somebody oh my God! Please do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna go to our link in bio on Instagram, and that's where you're gonna find our shop. While you're there, you can also just follow us on Instagram if you don't do that already. And then don't forget that you can also join us on Patreon to help us create this important queer content. You're going to head to patreon.com slash ovaries talk to sign up and get that bonus content. And for social media, you're going to head over to ovaries talk on the Twitter, the Instagram and Facebook and the TikToks. Mm -hmm. If these ovaries could talk also on YouTube, Mm -hmm. support the podcast and join our community. If you're not on Patreon, you are missing out on valuable backstage happenings. That's patreon.com slash ovaries talk. Don't forget You get bonus content behind the scenes. Yeah, and if you are on Patreon, feel free to drop us a line and tell us what you wish we had on Patreon because we're always listening. Okay, Beulah's ready to go go to her booty call with Helen. I don't even know Mm. what's going on with these two. I don't know what y'all doing, but I'm out of here. I got to go. Lord, I got to go. I did enough work. Roll the tape, Helen. Let's go, honey. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, (laughs) eggs. (laughs) Ovaries. Out. Out. (laughs) If these uh, uh, ovaries could talk, they would say, eggs, ovaries, out. One more thing before we go that Beulah has reminded me. We have to say, obviously, a huge thank you to our Patreon members, as always, who help us make this show, and our episode sponsor, Lightstream. Check out their low-interest fixed-rate loans for practically any purpose. 